How many of you have digital cameras at home? Or even a cell phone with a camera? Much, pretty much every person has some type of camera within their possession. We now have devices in our lives that allow us to capture a moment with just a second of notice. But do you know how the picture you take in front of you, that you send to your friend, or the one you print off at Walmart, is created? Photos are very important to how our world works now. From capturing memories, to recording history, to even sharing information. Because photos are so important, I want to share my knowledge of how what we see in front of us is turned into a photograph that we see on our screen. A camera works in a very similar way to how our eyes work and allow us to see what's in front of us. I have been interested in photography for as long as I can remember. I have developed this passion through years of experimenting with different cameras. I started using a point and shoot camera that I got as a gift and then I moved on to my iPhone. And eventually I progressed to using a professional DRSL camera that allows me to use different lenses. I've even experimented with a Polaroid camera that instantly prints off my, cam my picture when I'm done. Although each of these devices are vastly different from each other, they all use the same mechanics to create the image I decided to take. Today I will describe how a digital camera uses light to materialize what, is, what we see in front of us. First, I will explain how I set up the camera to get the perfect shot. Then I will explain what happens within the camera when a picture is taken. So to begin, we need to understand the process of setting up the camera to take the best shot we can. When taking a picture in manual mode, there are settings that need to be changed based on where the picture is taken and how the photographer wants the picture to turn out. The first thing that needs to be set is the ISO. The ISO is how sensitive the camera is to light. It runs on a doubling scale in most cameras. The lowest ISO is 100, then it goes on to 200, then 400, then 800, then 1600, and on, depending how good your camera is. The ISO needs to be changed based on how intense the lighting is where the photo is being taken. If the photo is being taken in low lighting, such as inside or on like a cloudy day, the ISO needs to be set to increase the sensitivity to light. The IS, a higher ISO also allows photographers to shoot moving subjects, like let's say sporting events. On the other hand, if the location where the photo is being taken is very dark, is very bright and, the, and sunny, the ISO is, needs to be set lower so you don't overexpose the image. The next thing that needs to be set is the aperture. The aperture controls how much light is let into the camera through the lens, it, like into the camera itself through the lens. The aperture runs on a scale of f-stops. Each stop lets a different amount of light in by opening or closing the lens. The aperture works in a similar way to how our eye works. When the, the iris in our eye works. When there's a, when we're in the dark, our iris expands real wide to let as much light in that is needed to let us see. But if we're in the bright sunlight, our pupil contracts to let um, like less light in for that exact same reason. The aperture in the camera is our iris. One of the most important reasons photographers change the aperture is to change the depth of field. Just like our eyes, the camera can focus on one thing right in front of us, blurring the rest, or it can, this is called a shallow depth of field, or it can focus on the entire scene Give, which is a greater depth of field. How this happens is the camera can only focus on one exact point, but depending on what the setting, the aperture is set to, it can record a certain distance before and behind the image, allowing it to still stay sharp. The final setting that needs to be set is the shutter speed. The shutter speed, the shutter in the camera is the curtain in front of the image sensor. The shutter speed is how long that curtain is let open before close, the camera closes it. The shutter speed is based on seconds and parts of seconds, depending on which is chosen. The photographer, just, if a, the photographer decides the shutter speed based on what they are photographing. If the photographer wants to freeze frame a person running, they will choose a very short shutter speed, like one one thousandth of a second. Also, if the shutter is not open for enough time, it will underexpose the image, making it too dark. But if they want to capture motion of a car driving, they will have a longer shutter speed, like let's say three seconds. And if the opposite happens and it's open for too long, it will overexpose the image, making it too light. Basically, the motion 
a photographer wants to capture, the more time they leave the shutter open for. The shutter speed is changed most frequently of all the settings because how light changes so easily when you're outside in an uncontrollable setting. Overall, the different settings work together to create a good quality photograph. Now that you understand the setup of a, of a photograph, let's explore what happens inside the camera. There are a lot of mechanics that happen in the camera when a photograph is taken. Let's start with when the shutter button is pushed. When a photographer pushes the button, it opens the shutter for a allotted amount of time, based on the settings that were decided before the picture was taken. To make this in terms we will understand, um, pressing the button is equivalent to like opening our eyes. Next, when the shutter is open and light is entering the camera, it is hitting the sensor, the image sensor. The image sensor is a piece of electrical equipment that converts light into electrical and in, into an electrical signal. The image sensor is broken down into many different different individual photosites. Each photosite is essentially a cavity that captures the light entering the camera. Millions of these photosites make up a sensor. In the camera, but the exact amount depends on how good your camera is and what type it is. The more photosites there are, the clearer the image is though, because it creates more pixels. The image sensor acts like the retina that captures what we see in our eyes. After the picture is taping, done being taken, the camera figures out how many photons of light landed in each photosite. How this happens is within each cavity the strength of that electrical signal is being measured. Each photosite is recording the intensity of the light at that exact point. However, if this is the only process that happened, all the images produced would be black and white because each cavity cannot distinguish how much of each color they have, just lightness and darkness. Each photosite um, creates, like a color image is created by placing a filter over each photosite that only allows one of uh, certain colors in. First, in color photography, um, most digital cameras can only capture the primary colors of light. These primary colors are red, blue, and green. Together, they make up every color we see in photographs. Each photosite can only capture one of these colors, making it to get the full image and needs to guess and approximate the other two to get a full color image in that photosite. There are usually twice as many green photosites as there are the other two because the human eye is more sensitive to the color green. The, this process is similar to what happens in the back of our eyes. The retina uses rods and cones to, like the camera uses photosites. Rods collect the brightness and cones collect the color and detail of what we see in front of us. This is exactly how the sensor in the back of the camera uses photosites to collect the, all the information. Then the electrical signal recorded at each photosite becomes pixels after they are scanned. Each pixel records the color and intensity of light at the exact point on that sensor. The image processor through an analog to digital converter or ADC turns each pixel into a number and links them together. The ADC's job is to classify the voltage of each pixel level of brightness into either ones or zeros. Depending on how the camera, depending on the camera, there can be a varying number of values for this brightness of a single pixel. An example is with an 8-bit sensor, the camera is recording up to 256 different values of brightness. So depending on the color, it has a different value. This is similar to how the information is collected by the rods and cones is compiled in the retina. Finally, this enormously long string of ones and zeros is the picture that was taken when the button was pushed. These numbers are just like the electrical impulses that are sent from the retina to our optical nerve where the impulses are interpreted as sight or in the cameras, a picture. Altogether, each of these aspects of photography is important to capturing what we see in front of us the way we want to. Today, I described how digital cameras use the light to materialize what we see in front of us into a photograph. First, I explained how to set up the camera to get the perfect shot. Then I explained what happens within the camera when the shutter button is pushed. While in this, while this in-depth understanding 
of how a digital camera works isn't necessarily necessary for taking a picture with your phone. It will make you a better photographer and it will help you capture the most amazing images if you know how to do it.